Welcome scholars to ELD with Meeks and Bradley. I'm Mrs. Meeks and I'll be covering types of nouns with you today. Uh, throughout our video, feel free to pause, rewind, or stop the video at any time that you need. As we continue through our types of nouns, we're gonna be covering eight types of nouns today. Uh, as you're taking notes, please make sure you notice we have our common nouns and proper nouns. That's gonna be our regulars and capitals concrete, abstract, collective and compound nouns, and then our countable and uncountable nouns. So we're gonna continue with our notes on common nouns. So our common nouns cover people, places, things, and ideas. Now ideas, we're gonna circle back to this later because it's a little bit more complex. Um, we're gonna come back to it at, during our abstract noun section, but just to give you a hint or a little idea, um, Things that we value like friendship, maybe, or loyalty, um, honesty. These are all different types of ideas, and we'll come back to those later. Uh, but for our common nouns, um, we recognize them because they have lower case letters at the start. Uh, so if we take a look at each of these little file folders we have here, you'll notice all of our lower case. Our C and cat, our H and house, in book and so on uh, but we are gonna look at um, sorting them out we have some places here like house and school but items like a cat which is an animal or a book are also things then we have our student which is a person and we're gonna go ahead and go to our box of tricks over here and find ourselves another common noun so of our daily necessities, I like the charger. We're gonna bring that over here. Put it into our file box. Let's see. So that would be our charger. So you'll notice, um, go ahead and add our word here, lowercase, making sure it stays lowercase, charger. And look, get a few little box of tricks here, right? A little bit of animation there for you as you're looking for them to charge your phones and your devices. Um, these are our common nouns. And again, make sure you've got these in your notes. Now, as we recap common nouns, uh, remember our common nouns were our people, places, uh, things, and ideas. And you'll notice that right now I am using capital letters because this is the title of our last slide, our common nouns. Um, so as a title, they get capital letters and that's what we're talking about right now, proper nouns. So our people, places, things, and ideas, um, when they have names, right? So we're gonna capitalize them because they are the name of a specific person or place. Like I'm Meeks, so capital M. We have the White House. So not just your home or your house anymore, but the White House, where the president lives, that is the White House. Uh, we're actually in California right now. So a common noun would be a state, but the name of that state, California, makes it a proper noun. So we just wanna make sure that we capitalize them. Um, Tiger High School is the name of the high school. Um, oh, Mexico, that's where my family's from. There you go, capital letter. Common noun would be a country. Mexico would be the proper noun version. Uh, English language development, the name of this course. You might also see it as three capital letters, E-L-D, right? Then we have Vishlas, which is Bradley's pets right there, her dogs. Um, the Cardenas Market, where I personally like to go for pan dulce, our, our sweet bread. English 10, Honda Civic, here we have Honda is the name of the company. Civic is the type of car, but it's the name of that car. Animal Crossing, my daughters love this game, I don't know why. And Apple Phone, We most of us have one of those. So when we're using proper nouns, remember they are names and we wanna make sure we capitalize those. We are now gonna continue our journey through nouns. So we have a category called concrete nouns. Now concrete nouns are nouns you can touch, taste, hear, see, and smell. Um, my favorite are the taste ones. 
So concrete nouns, uh, we also want to keep in mind um, our previous lessons on common nouns and proper nouns because a concrete noun can be either of these two. For example, um, over here in the corner, I have some flowers. Okay. And so a flower, I can touch it, I can pick it, I can smell it, and that would make it a common noun. But if you think of your favorite flower, or maybe what we have here, these could be daisies. The name of a flower, or even the name of a person. So we have our capital there, that would make it a proper noun. But we wanna focus on our concrete. What does it mean to be concrete? So um, I can see a sunset. I can hear a song. Um, ooh, it's getting into that season of heat where we live. So we're looking at slurpees or ices. Uh, this could be a dessert here or a drink, which would make it a common noun. But if I happen to go into um, a store and want to buy an actual slurpee by the name of the brand, that would be a capital. Then we have our food over here. So if I look at the individual food or the category of food and I just say food or taco, that's gonna be a common noun. But if I name it and I wanna say Mexican food, then I'm gonna need my capital up here. But again, everything here I can touch, taste, see, hear, and smell. Maybe this is your favorite toy, right? If you have a name for your toy or you wanna give it a name, that would make it a proper noun. But a toy that you can touch, it's soft, you can feel it, that is our concrete noun and a common noun. And then over here we have a shape. Something I can see, something I can draw. So just a quick recap, um, take a moment, add to your notes, think of some concrete nouns, and make sure you hit one for each of the senses. Next on our list are abstract nouns. So I mentioned earlier that ideas were tricky. Uh, so abstract nouns are ideas, qualities of state of beings, like our feelings and emotions, or something non-physical. So um, abstract usually means it's something we can't touch. So when we look at an idea, um, over here we have uh, to be brave or bravery. Uh, what makes them tricky is that they can also be verbs, right, action words, or even adjectives, like things we think about. So here we're focusing on their role as a noun, as a, an idea or an emotion or a feeling um, that we have here. So for example, anger, right? So anger is something we feel. It is an abstract noun. Uh, if I were to make it angry, that would be an adjective. So that's the tricky part that we were talking about earlier. So let's just focus on these states of being. Um, hope or hopeful. Hope is an idea. Um, over here we have our heart. Now we said hearts, right? Shapes would have been common nouns. But as the concept of love, okay, it is an abstract idea. So. Um, looking at these images, can you think of another abstract idea or a noun, a state of being or an emotion? Add that to your notes. So now we're going to cover collective nouns. So in the word collective, we have the word collect. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to collect uh, singular nouns and make them into a group. So a collective noun is a group of people, animals, or objects. So here we have some cute little kittens and a group of kittens is called a litter. And actually you can go into many groups of animals and they actually have specific names, but we'll save that for another day. Uh, down here in our corner, we have individual flowers and flowers together form a bouquet. And yes, that is a silent T, okay, bouquet. Uh, down here at the bottom, we have individual singers, but together these singers make up a choir or even a chorus. Then, I love this one. Bradley made sure I could spell team here. 
So a group of people, maybe playing sports or a game together, or maybe even class, you're broken up into teams. Together you are a team. And then for those of you who are musically inclined, um, individual members of a music band, right? So here we have a band. Now you'll notice um, we are using common nouns. So these are all lowercase letter, bouquet, choir, team, band. If they had names attached to them, then they would be proper nouns. Um, so again, collective nouns, groups of people, animals, or objects. We're back for compound nouns. So compound is a word that means to put something together. Um, so this is usually um, types of nouns that consist of two or more words joined together to form a single word. So let's look at that again. Two or more words joined together. So when we talk about compound, we mean words that are joined. Now these words can be joined in different ways, um, three specifically. Uh, most of the words that we have up here on our board are what we call closed compound uh, nouns. So let's take a look. We have skateboard, newspaper. So for example, to look at a newspaper, and again, these all look like they're common nouns. So we're gonna use some lowercase here, but newspaper, one big word, and we're gonna take a look at it really quick. And we have the word news, and then we have the word paper. So together, closed, joined words, newspaper. Uh, we also have our rainbow down here. So again, the word rain and the word bow, together, compound, rainbow. Um, here, in case you're as hungry as I am, this is seafood. So food from the sea, best part about compound nouns, most of the definitions are in them. Then we have an airplane. And a sunflower, because it looks like, it's a flower that looks like the sun. Now you'll notice I'm running out of room. I'm gonna use one of our other compound nouns. I'm gonna hyphenate it just because I'm running out of space but typically it's spelled together, but it breaks. Um, so that's one of our others, hyphenated. And you use that hyphen for two reasons. Uh, one, like here, I ran out of space, so I broke it up, but there are actual compound nouns that use hyphens. For example, father-in-law. And then lastly, we have our third compound noun, which is what we call an open compound, which means there's a space between the words, an opening between them. So Christmas tree. Um, Christmas, right, is a holiday, so it's gonna be capitalized there, like a proper noun. Christmas and the word tree. And again, no hyphen, no closed space, but open because Christmas tree is a compound noun. Now you might be asking yourself, Ms. Sneaks, how do I know which one to use when? Um, there's no rule for this. You actually just have to either memorize it or look it up. That's what I had to do before we did this lesson. So now we're gonna cover countable nouns. And just like it sounds, that means we're gonna be counting nouns. So what can we count? Well, we can count dogs, pies, cars, and stars. So our definition says nouns that can be counted, these nouns have a singular and a plural. So a singular refers to one, and then a plural refers to more than one. So we're gonna take a look at how these might be counted and what they would look like as plurals. So for example, dogs. So one dog, or in Bradley's case, two dogs. Uh, we also like pie here, apple pie, blueberry pie, maybe even pumpkin pie, but I can have one pie or multiple pies. I can count them. And there comes in our plural S's. 
last we have our cars um, and vehicles depending on which one you like we can walk out into the parking lot count all those cars and maybe there's 10 cars on a quiet day or maybe there's a hundred cars out there and then of course too many to count in the sky stars or as I like to think Bradley Meeks two stars uh, so those are our countable nouns so now we're going to get into uncountable nouns now this can be a little bit tricky kind of like our abstract nouns um, and that's because these are nouns that cannot be counted not in a traditional sense um, they do not have plurals like our s's and es's that we just reviewed with our singulars and plurals right pi and pies um, they don't have these at the end instead they have what we call quantity markers. Um, quantity markers are typically units. So for example, um, you could have multiple uh, loaves of bread or loaves of bread. Um, you can have pieces of bread or even slices of bread. So you need a quantity marker. We don't say, I have two breads. We would say I have two loaves of bread. Then we have, oh, money. So this is another one where you need quantity markers like bills or even dollars. This would allow us to count but the units of money, but we don't say I have three monies to take to the vending machine. Um, then we have words like science and chemistry. Um, there might be different types of chemistry classes or um, subcategories, but you're not going to say chemistries. Then we have, oh, one of our abstract nouns. Um, I don't have three hopes for this year. Um, I can be hopeful for the year. So we don't have quantity here either. Another familiar one that you may not even realize you know already are bodies of water. So for our quantity marker for water, we're looking at bodies of water. So think about it. Do I count waters? No, I might count oceans. I might count lakes. Or in the case of cooking, I might talk about cups of water. But I need those quantity markers in order to talk about these uncountable nouns. So to bring us to an end, we're going to quickly look at how can you tell if it's a noun. So we've talked about our eight different types of nouns. And the one thing they all have in common is they are places, they are people, they are things, and even ideas. And while we're not going to cover all the categories, we do want to figure out how can we quickly identify them, whether we're writing or reading. Um, most nouns, most, not all, but most, have what we call an article. And we'll get into these details more later. But what you need to know is that an article is a word that comes before a noun. They are typically words like a or an. So for example, a white house, any white house will do, right? I wanna paint my house white, well, not really, but a white house. But then we have more specific articles like the word the. So when we say the white house, we think of DC where the president lives. That was one of our previous examples. So typically when you're looking for a house or the house, a cat, the cat, a dog, the dog, um, you can typically identify a noun using articles, but they're not always there. There are a couple that don't use them. For example, abstract nouns. Uh, we don't say I have the hope. Maybe I do, but typically we don't say that. Um, so keep in mind, uh, a, an, and the can help you identify most of your nouns if you're reading or try to use them in your writing. So um, we're going to look into our next slide just to make sure if you have any questions about nouns, um, you can put them into your notes, bring them up at our next discussion, um, email them, 
but jot down any questions you might have. Rewind the video, go back, review the notes, make sure you understand what we're going through. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. We wanna make sure that we're clear with all of these nouns. 